Have you ever seen a fight where one person didn't seem to be aware they were about to be in a fight, and then once the fight started, they start getting hit? They seem to be so confused about, wait, we're fighting? You're hitting me? Jeez, this is real? Have you ever seen something like that? I've seen some of these, so many times in my life I've seen something like this. Some guys would be arguing back and forth, and then you see one guy very clearly has decided, we're getting ready to fight. And the other guy just says not. He thinks there's a discussion happening. We're just having a good discussion. And then the guy will throw a punch and hit him. And even still, the guy still thinks, wait a minute, hold on, this was a conversation. The guy who doesn't know he's in a fight and he's in a violent situation, that is the GOP. That is why we have lost cultural issue after cultural issue after cultural issue for decades. Because the GOP still seems to think it's the year 1900 and we're going to have a spirited debate and then we'll go play cribbage together because we all want what's best for America. And then the communists, the Democrats on the other side, they're busy putting glass inside of the tape on their knuckles because they know it's about to be on like Donkey Kong. That is the difference. And that brings me perfectly to the man who announced he's running for president today. Tim Scott. Now, we'll get to the why he announced he's running, why he's actually running. I'll get to that in a couple moments. But Tim Scott, it just, he's everything. He should be the mascot for the GOP. Why? Because Tim Scott thinks we're just going to come together and unify, and we're going to heal these divisions. And don't you find it interesting that people that come out and voice support for guys like Tim Scott, People like Cory Booker. And Tim is a guy that has, we have a lot of shared life experiences. Two big, bald, black guys growing up in America have had similar experiences that are bad, run-ins with police officers, and similar experiences that are good, growing up in really good black churches. What should people who are intrigued by his presidential aspirations, shall we call them, know about him? I mean, you know him on a personal level. I think that as I look at this Republican field, he may be one of those people that is underestimated. Why would Cory Booker come out and defend Tim Scott? Well, if you want to know Exhibit A for the fight analogy I used earlier, remember when St. George Floyd died? We all woke up, we looked at an internet video, it looked terrible, there's this black dude on the ground, the cops all got a knee on his back, he's calling for his mom, he's all sweaty and looking bad, and then he dies. And immediately the communists, as they always do, they took your emotions, the emotions you felt as you looked at that video, and they said, hey, we can use this, we can seize power, we can advance our agenda, and they pounced on it immediately. And immediately the system formed a national narrative, the cops are the enemy, defund the police, Give the cities back to the animals. That was the national narrative that was beginning to be formed. And the GOP, like they always do, instead of fighting against that narrative that has now killed untold numbers of Americans in cities when it's all said and done, instead of fighting against that narrative, the GOP said, where's, where's Tim Scott? Tim, you hate cops too, right? Hey, let's do some federal police reform. And Tim Scott went and joined with Cory Booker to decide federally just how much it was the fault of the cops that the urban black communities are a disaster in America. Helping the communists form the narrative. Taking the can of gasoline instead of the bottle of water and dumping it all over the flames of the new narrative they're forming. Again, thinks he's in a friendly game of cribbage. Just debate, look, we all want what's best. Instead of being the bare knuckles brawler it's going to take to defeat the communists in this nation. I'm gonna read you a quote, and I don't have to take anything out of context. This is Tim Scott's own quote from Tim Scott's own book. Do you wanna know why Tim Scott can never be allowed to have real power beyond senator in this country? Certainly never anything to, like president. Do you wanna know why? Here's Tim Scott in his own words. Chapter nine from his book, Opportunity Knox is the name of the book. Eventually we landed in a runoff against Paul Thurman. That meant two head-to-head -head debates. I do not use this word lightly, but I loathe debates. 
I am not a naturally combative person, and that showed in the first debate. Here's what I believe. I believe Tim Scott, having never met him, but I believe Tim Scott is probably a very decent human being, probably a very solid man kind of guy you'd uh, allow to watch your kids for the weekend while you took off with the wife. I believe that all the way. But there are many, 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 many men I would allow watch, want to watch my sons for a weekend, but I know they're not ready to lead me into battle. And we are in a battle. The truth is, decent as I do believe he probably is, we don't have time for naivete like Tim Scott. We don't have time for, well, I'm not combative, guys. We don't have time while the Cheka arms itself against the political opponents of Democrats. We don't have time for somebody who says, let's just see how it all plays out. Do you think the FBI, do you still believe and trust in the FBI to do its job, even with a former president, uh, in a nonpartisan way? Or do you believe, as the, as the former president says, that the FBI is executing a witch hunt? And there's been lots of questions before this raid about whether or not the FBI is doing their job apolitical. And we don't know the answer to that question yet. This is probably gonna, about the FBI. This is going to raise more questions, in my opinion. We need to let this play out and see exactly what happens, but we should all have been stunned and surprised and shocked at what happened yesterday. You see what I mean? It's not ready for prime time. Trying to be nice with the host. Let's not get too combative. Well, they might be biased. We haven't, we can't be sure yet, guys. Well, we just need to play it out trying to be Mr. Nice Guy. Just the friendly game of cribbage. Cribbage Tim Scott. We don't have time for this. Just let's let it play out. What's happening to Donald Trump, let it play out. As you know, because you watch this show, but you do know that there's a very good chance, the likely scenario, that Donald Trump, an innocent man, is going to jail because we live in a banana republic. You know that, right? Now, maybe you're thinking, Jesse, you're being over the top. Jesse, that's too much. Okay, fine. Don't take my word for it. Take the word of his former attorney. So I think this is a, I think this obstruction case is a tight case. Uh, and yes, I do think he'll go to jail on it. I think he'll go to jail on it. Already been indicted in New York City. Indictment coming in Washington, D.C. Most likely an indictment coming in Georgia. And these communist-controlled areas will have communist juries, communist judges. And so while Donald Trump, an innocent man, gets prepped to go to prison, we just got to let it play out, guys. Hey, let's not go too far. Hey, hey, we're, we're all friends here. We all want what's right, right? Go America. No time for that. No time for it. Tim Scott, I support his presidency in the year 1980. But it is not the year 1980. It is the year 2023, and Tim Scott doesn't know what time it is. You like what you just saw? Subscribe to the YouTube channel. The First TV has a YouTube channel. It's outstanding. Go hit that subscribe button now.